I saw these angels taking up positions everywhere. In the day of Tudor, all the angels were in the air. Huge, mighty angels. Brahmanda mana, Vallam yana day of Tudor. Over the Pacific Ocean. Pacific Samudra Samudra Tinmail. If you guess that these angels have something to do with the end of the world, of course you'd be right. YouTube prophets have been working overtime to explain that an increasing number of earthquakes taking place around the world is a harbinger of end times. You know, the Bible warns us, of course, of the increasing number of earthquakes, right, as the return of the Lord draws near, as the day of the Lord draws near, right, that you're going to see increasing number of earthquakes. Now, we've already seen the, the quake, and then we, we've had a second quake now, right, with a different epicenter in Japan. Okay, that's two. So the obvious question to ask is, are we really seeing an increasing number of earthquakes? Not one single creationist, televangelist or self-proclaimed prophet bothered to even ask this question or check to see if their premise is correct. So I suppose I'll have to do it for them. The United States Geological Survey keeps tabs on the number of earthquakes worldwide and no surprise, it turns out that earthquakes of magnitude 7 or greater have remained fairly constant. The perception that there are more earthquakes may be the result of more numerous and accurate seismometers, as the USGS suggests, but it may also be because the worldwide reach of satellites and television news means creationists are more aware of what's going on in the world beyond the moonshine still and the hay barn. It would help if their understanding of the past equally extended beyond the most recent hoedown. While instruments weren't around to record the Shenzi earthquake in China, it killed 830,000 people. On that scale, this should have been the mother of all harbingers of the end of times, except that the world didn't end. The earthquake happened in 1556. 230,000 people were killed in an earthquake near Aleppo, Syria, and the world didn't end then either, in 1138. Around 200,000 died in an earthquake in Iran in 856. 100,000 in China in 1290. None of this seems to have ended the world, and the activity has not got any worse. Earthquakes are caused by the movement of tectonic plates. When two plates get jammed, stress accumulates, and when the jam is broken, the plates move suddenly and cause an earthquake. That isn't to say there isn't some pattern to all this earthquake activity, because movement along one section of a plate boundary will put stress on the plate borders either side of it, a phenomenon known as stress transfer. A very clear example of this pattern was found by researchers Stein, Barker and Dietrich along the North Anatolian fault line in Turkey. An earthquake at the eastern end of the fault line transfers stress further west, triggering another earthquake years later. Over years and decades, these earthquakes march inevitably westwards. There may even be an external cause that triggers seemingly unconnected earthquakes in different parts of the world, because although the cause of large earthquakes is crustal movement, many faults around the world are under great stress and close to rupturing, so it doesn't take much to trigger them. Teleseismic waves, for example, which travel through several plates, and even global weather patterns. Research shows that a sudden drop in atmospheric pressure can trigger earthquakes, uh, but it still doesn't mean Danny Glover was right when he said the Haiti earthquake was caused by global warming. There's also the tidal effect of the moon's gravitational attraction, which moves the Earth's crust as well as the oceans. There are still a lot of unknowns that may cause earthquakes to cluster in different parts of the world over a period of years. But according to the USGS, there's still no unusual pattern of earthquakes occurring so far this century compared to the long term. We, we just have to give thanks to God that there's no one dead. I mean, there's lots of damage to property and things, but there's no one dead, and everybody agrees. Normally when you, when you hear of earthquakes, you, you look at people going through rubble looking for dead, living persons and dead persons, and there's nothing like that in Christchurch. This has to be one of the wonders of the world. That, of course, was after the so-called miracle earthquake that hit Christchurch last year. A few months later, another earthquake hit the city, and nearly 200 people were killed. For some reason, Bishop Jones didn't go on television again to talk about the wonders of the Lord, or his pious interpretation of seismic geology. Glenn Beck, on the other hand, well, here's what he thought President Obama should say when the Japanese earthquake struck in March. My fellow Americans, I know that you, like me, are heartbroken over what the people in Japan are enduring right now. There was a massive earthquake, 9.0, you know it, you can't avoid it, you've seen it everywhere. 
It's one of the largest earthquakes on our planet's history. Of course it's not. Our planet has been through much bigger earthquakes, but no one can fault the sentiment. Anyway, that's what Beck said when pretending to be the president. Here's what Beck said about the Japanese earthquake when he was playing himself. I'm not saying God is, uh, you know, causing earthquakes. Well, I'm, I'm not saying that he... I'm not not saying that either. Okay, God, <laughs> yeah. God, what God does is God's business. I have no idea. But I'll tell you this. Whether you call it Gaia or whether you call it Jesus, there's a message being sent. And that is... Hey, you know that stuff we're doing? Not really working out real well. Maybe we should stop doing some of it. <laughs> I'm just saying. Well, Glenn, if earthquakes are a punishment to mankind for our sin, then why are the only people being punished those who live near seismically active fault lines? Does human wickedness only happen along the edges of crustal plates? If earthquakes are a sign of anything, they're a sign that crustal plates are continuing to move just as they have for millions of years, and the Earth's geology is pretty much the same as it's been since the Cambrian. If anything was going to herald some supernatural end of the world, it would surely be if the Earth's crustal plates stopped moving and we got no earthquakes. But earthquakes aren't the only sign of impending doom, apparently. All sorts of nasty things are now going on in the world. We have these natural disasters. We have people murdering each other. We, wow, that's we unheard have of. Parents killing their children. You can't even keep up with what's going on anymore. We have this economic problems all over the world. Yep, this never happened before. These things are going to get worse. Spill it again. And worse. And again. And worse, okay? Okay, that's not. Look, I've got nothing against these prophecies. Anyone is free to prophesy anything they like. But don't piss on the roof and tell me it's raining. If the end of days is supposed to see an increase in war, pestilence and famine, then we've seen the opposite happening. In the last 2,000 years, we've never been healthier, better fed and more at peace. If you can't accept that, then here's a challenge. Read a history book. Then find any decade in the past 2,000 years when war, famine and disease were less prevalent than the last 10 years. Find a time when we were more at peace. Find a time when average life expectancy was higher, when disease was lower or when the world was better fed. We may have conflicts in Afghanistan and Burma and elsewhere, but we have nothing to compare to the 8th century Anlu rebellion that killed around 15% of the world's population. And while we have the threat from Al-Qaeda, for two centuries, Western Europe was terrorized by the Vikings, and a few centuries later, most of Europe and Asia lived in fear of Mongol invasions. You think AIDS is a sign of increased pestilence? What about the Black Death, bubonic plague that wiped out a third of the population of Europe in the Middle Ages, or the depopulation of the Americas from introduced diseases? What about cholera, measles, polio, typhoid, and smallpox that were once prevalent, but have now either disappeared or been brought under control? Now the average life expectancy of the world's population is the highest it's ever been. Ironically, in this age of science and reason, it's easier than ever to set yourself up as a sagacious prophet. All you need is to have a basic knowledge of seismic geology and an audience that doesn't. Choose an active tectonic plate boundary and prophesy a major earthquake. And I recommend going for the region of the world that's more seismically active than any other, the western rim of the Pacific. I guarantee you'll be able to hail yourself as a prophet the next time the crustal plates move. But don't just take my word for it. Listen to this little fakir. One more time it will happen again. That is why those angels are positioned and stationed in the Pacific Ocean. One more time it's going to take place. Our time, the rumours of things going astray, um, and there shall be a great confusion as to where things really are, and nobody will really know where lieth those little things.